Hey, good morning, guys. So I was on uh, a forum yesterday, and I noticed someone was having ignition troubles, and uh, I suggested he check timing of his engine, and that got me thinking, why not do a video on it? I like doing videos on things that uh, crop up like that. So we're going to use the chainsaw. It doesn't matter what piece of equipment you're using. I'm just using this because it's what I've got. The first thing we do is pop the four bolts off, take the flywheel cover off, and uh, we will get you set back up from there. Now in this case, I'm using the uh, clutch side, the power takeoff side, simply because the flywheel side, the nut is recessed, this side is exposed, it's easier to put the degree wheel on. Little washer comes off, put that out there. And now you can see we've got our exposed shaft, which we can connect onto. Now we need to remove the rear cover and the top cover to remove the spark plug. Smaller scrunch. Where are you? You're not in there. <gasps> yeah. Let's have a look at the colour while we're here. Nice new plug. Right, let's get our degree wheel set up. Open it up. Lock it down. TDC is facing upwards, which is good. Okay, now we need a piece of wire. I'm gonna put a little bend in the wire at the end, a little loop. And then we're gonna fix this onto the cylinder. I've got my piston stop. I'm going to rotate the flywheel because that's the only thing I can grab on without messing any of this lot up. I'm going to put this piston stop in place, doesn't really matter where. And I'm going to rotate, there you go, rotate the engine and we have 40, oh it would be wouldn't it? I'm not doing halves, all right there we go. We're at 44 on one side and this side we're at 41. So we add those together, 44 plus 41 is 85. Divide that by two is 42.5. So we move this to 42.5, which is there. Oh, come on, work with me here. 40, yeah, there we go, 42.5. Go back the other way. And this should be 42.5. 42, 42 12.5. That is. So now what we've done, we've set this degree wheel with the exact timing of the engine. Now, this is really important to get this spot on. Give yourself a bit of time, do it correctly. And what I'm going to do here, <coughs> I'm going to get it at top dead centre here, and then I'm going to mark. Can you see down there? I'm going to mark the clutch there, and I'm going to mark the case behind it here, and a corresponding line there, there, and there for top dead centre. And now what we need to do is to take the flywheel off after all that. Did I say flywheel or degree wheel? I meant degree wheel. So from here, I'm going to reattach the spark plug. It's important that it has the gap to jump. Ignition has to be on. We're going to clip one. I'm just using crocodile clips here. There, and that can go to the cylinder. Okay, now what we need to do is get our timing light. This is my timing light here. And I'm gonna hook this up towards the spark plug on the HT lead. Last thing I need to do is rotate this engine. So I'm gonna use the drill. Okay, now we need to go on that fast speed for drilling. And I'm gonna turn the light off now. So we wanna see where this white mark lands somewhere around about here on the plastic, okay? Hopefully you'll be able to see it, we'll see. Might be a bit overexposed for you. As we 
rotate this drill, this clutch is spinning. And as the engine sparks, it will flash and it will shine up this white mark that I've got. And that will give us a point at which the engine is sparking. And what's been happening is it's been sparking there. And you can see, if you look closely, I've put a couple of dots there. The first one was where I thought it was. And the second one was where it ended up being, it was almost like a reference mark. And then the second one is where it was. Now, if I was to put the engine at wide open throttle, it would probably be advanced. It would be sparking before. And that's because we need, the flame front takes time to propagate throughout the cylinder. If we spark at a certain time, it's going to be after that time that the, the fuel is fully ignited. So we need the faster the engine running, the more advanced timing we need. So that's where we are at the moment is there. It will probably be somewhere around about there once it's running at full throttle, but uh, it gives us a rough idea as to where we are. I could get us set up, couldn't I, for full throttle? I probably should, I've gone to this much effort. seem to have ignition advance built in. So uh, we went to, well, I'd, I'd guesstimate around about seven to 8,000 RPM. Just be aware, don't wide open throttle the engine without the clutch drum on because you're gonna overstretch those springs. So uh, something to bear in mind, but around about the five to 7,000 RPM is not gonna cause any issues here. I didn't notice any ignition advance. I, I would have thought there would have been a small amount of ignition advance on there, but it, it doesn't seem to be the case. Ignition advance doesn't happen like 26 degrees at uh, 2000 RPM, then all of a sudden when you get to 14,000, it jumps up to uh, 29 or 30. It, it doesn't work like that. It would be a gradual transition up through the ignition advance range uh, as the RPM goes up. So there's no ignition advance on here. So we don't need to change anything. That's all good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the degree wheel set back up. We're gonna get it realigned with everything and we're gonna find out when that point meets that, what the, uh, the degree number is, and that will give us our timing. So I'm gonna rotate it. You can see it spinning around. Can you focus on there? Focus. We rotate to that point there. And we check our degree, and we're 29 degrees. If I come back here, we're going to have slightly different perspectives, but uh, let me see what our timing is. Oh no, we're 28. That's where the timing was, we're 28 degrees. So that means that this engine runs throughout its full rev range. Well, I didn't go up to wide open throttle, but you just trust me on it. It runs at 28 degrees, it sparks at 28 degrees, and 28 degrees is like, some of the earlier engines that didn't rev so high would be uh, timed around about 26. And over the years, they started to increase the uh, ignition timing advance to the point uh, where it's a little bit uh, earlier. And all that would do is just give you a little bit better wide open throttle performance in those higher RPM ranges. So um, yeah, but you've got to be careful because if you advance the ignition too far, you're going to find it wants to bite you. Uh, when you're pulling that pull cord, if it rips it out of your hand, it's just telling you that it's sparking too early and uh, you're fighting against the uh, the explosion inside the engine, that controlled ignition inside the engine. So uh, if that's the case, retard your timing and uh, you shouldn't have any issues at all. But the newer machines, uh, they generally have ignition advance built into them and uh, you'd find that at idle. It would be around about 28, 26 to 28. And then at wide open throttle, you might advance by three, four degrees, and uh, you'd just have slightly better performance at wide open throttle up at those kind of 13 to 14,000 RPM. 
So there we go, that's how you time your electronic ignition engines. It's much easier to time the old points and condenser engines, but um, nonetheless, they can still be done like this. And this applies for any equipment like this. Uh, you know, two stroke, four stroke, doesn't matter. You just need to have a degree wheel, you need to have a timing light, and uh, you won't have any issues at all. So there we go. I hope it helps, and uh, I guess, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section, and I'll uh, go over them with you. All right, guys, have a great day. Catch ya, bye.